including this in every college so that is why nowadays this topic has become very very important and there are a few things we have to learn to become good mentors and those strategies i will be concentrating on in this presentation now can we have the slides please yeah this is my presentation the contents of my presentation are next slide second slide please yeah introduction origin meaning and definition mentor coach counselor techniques stages etiquette benefits potential problems role of mentoring in education next slide qualities of mentors tips for mentors mentor action plan and finally common practices so let us start with the presentation now can we have the next slide yeah let me introduce you to the topic with a beautiful quotation a mentor empowers a person to see a possible future and believe it can be obtained so this is the primary duty of a mentor it is to empower to make the person successful to make our mentee successful in whatever goals they have we have to make them successful we have to make empower them we have to give them a good future and we have to give them the self confidence that they can achieve these goals so these are the goals of a mentor to empower to give a good future and to develop self confidence these are the three primary duties of every mentor can we have the next slide yeah now let us understand how this word mentor has come into existence it has come from classical greek mythology actually uh, the hero of trojan war is achilles the second hero of trojan war is ulysses he was uh, known as a very uh, wise person that was the quality that was uh, most known about him he was favored by the goddess of wisdom athena and ulysses had a son called telemachus now when ulysses finished the trojan war he wanted to go on an adventure and uh, those adventures are written in a book called odysseus all of us know all these things i'm just giving you a brief intro that's it so ulysses when he was departing for his adventures he called his son who was very young at that time he called his son telemachus and say and said you have to follow your mentor i have chosen a person for you and you have to follow his advice you have to treat him as your guardian and he will guide you in your life the name of that person was mentor okay so from that word the word mentor came so all the teachers and guides who followed mentor who uh, guided young people were came to be known as mentor from then on so this word comes from greek mythology now can we have the next slide yeah now let us understand what is the definition of the word mentor now mentor means someone who can share their knowledge skills and experience to help another person to progress now before we became teachers all of us were students isn't it so when you are a student you have your own struggle you have your own experiences isn't it now when you become a teacher struggles and experiences to guide others who are following the same path as you isn't it all of us we go and try to find someone who already made the journey and we'll ask them for tips isn't it if we are visiting a place suppose i am visiting a temple town for the first time so i go to a person who already visited the temple and ask them for tips 
say how should I go up? This has been where facility, which facilities I can get, which person should I approach? All these things we are like that because we was to guide the common problems they may face, the common fears they may have. So all these things we know for isn't it? So for a teacher to become a mentor is something very, very natural, I think, because we ourselves were in their shoes at one time, isn't it? So we will be able to guide them in a very good manner. So our mentor should share his knowledge, skills, and experiences to help another person like day or two days. It's a process and we are a mentor to a person. Normally in our college, we met for one semester. That's the duration they give. Sometimes if we take a class for two semesters for the same cl uh, uh, class, then we mentor them for two semesters maximum. Minimum one semester, maximum two semesters, we become their mentors. So it is a process. It is not a it is a process. It stands for a considerable amount of time. So in this process, we have to help support, manage their own learning. We can't study for others, but we can tell them how best to study, isn't it? We can't we can help. Can all of you hear me? I think I lost the connection. I, I think I lost the connection. Yes, am I audible? Can somebody tell me, yes, please? Am I audible? Can somebody tell me, please? Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. Yeah. So mentoring helps people to manage their own learning, to maximize their potential, whatever talent they have we can encourage them to develop that talent we can encourage them to find goals we can encourage them to uh, plan for a very good career so we can help with developing the potential developing the skills and developing their performance and finally developing their personality also a good mentor will have a very long lasting impression on the student. Sometimes we see, isn't it, even after passing the course, some four or five years after also students come and speak with us, isn't it? They share their experiences and that is because of mentoring. That contact, that physical touch we have with them, that helps them through all the struggles they have. And they come back so satisfied with their success. And it gives us also satisfaction as teachers that we were able to be a part of their journey. Can we have the next slide? Yes. Now, usually we hear the word mentor. Most of the time, we use them together. We use them interchangeably. But there are slight differences in these words. So let us try to understand what are the differences, the subtle differences in these three words. Mentor. Mentor is an experienced person, a trusted advisor. OK. Now, mentor is somebody who is close to you, who works closely with you, who you can meet personally at a given period of time at regular intervals. Now, coach. Coaching is usually giving extra learning. Extra
we have coach isn't it now coaching is something which is given as okay now counselor what is counseling usually counselors are very trained mentors may or may not be trained but trained they are trained in psychology they are trained in guidance and counseling there are courses that are there for that isn't it so a counselor have to guide a person with specific problems mostly counselors deal with psychological problems with personal problems whereas mentors deal with academic or non academic problems i mean like extra curricular or co curricular like that okay so these are the subtle differences now can we have the next slide next slide please yeah now what are the differences between mentor coach and counseling i already told you now let me elaborate on that a mentor is meant for professional development means somebody who will help you academically or with co curricular or extra and for a long term i told you one semester or two semesters specific goals like you are weak in maths or you are weak in you are taking specific and it is short term definitely it will be short term once you finish that course you work on take in as i told you it deals psychology it has to be with emotional support and it is more symbolic person that person relies on you there should be a very highest level of confidence in each other when you counsel because it deals with psychological problems okay but let me tell you here myself these three words are different certainly but nowadays when we enter we do a little bit of coaching we do a little bit of counseling also isn't it but it is not to the highest level because mentor actually is okay so i think i have made myself very clear with this okay now let us have the next slide please yes what are the techniques mentoring they are one on one mentoring group mentoring peer mentoring distance or e mentoring reverse mentoring speed mentoring hello yes techniques of mentoring now let us try to understand in each and every technique very specifically one on one mentoring is a traditional method okay usually in this method mentor and one mentee the person who we are mentoring is called mentee okay so there is one mentor and one mentee so this is a traditional method where mentoring is done now next one is group mentoring now for group mentoring usually there are several mentors and several mentees sometimes one mentor may take care of uh, 20 mentees now that is what we usually do in college we have we are allotted 20 to 25 students depending on the number of the 
total number of the students. Okay, so there are several mentors, several mentees. Next is peer mentoring. Now, when we are doing peer mentoring, usually we are taking uh, some of the bright students or sometimes a little senior students and we allot them a group of mentees. So, they are also students. These people are student, mentee is a student. Now, in such conditions, it is called peer mentoring. Now, next is e-mentoring. E-platforms have become very, very popular. Now, most of us are doing remote learning also, isn't it? Remote learning as well as remote teaching. So, remote mentoring is also done through internet, virtually. So, the, we can meet virtual mentors through internet. We can interact with them. We can seek their help and guidance. That is e-mentoring. Now, next thing is reverse mentoring. Reverse mentoring is mostly seen in technical fields. See, uh, the best example is uh, when we had NAC, uh, we were all supposed to do so many Excel files. Most of us knew how to deal with Word. And but we had to work on that Our programmers who is much okay. so that is the reverse or flipped model where a junior teachers this is usually done in technical fields because uh, technology is something which we lag behind sometimes, isn't it? Especially operations. So, but then reverse or flipped model becomes very, very conducive. Okay. Now, next is speed mentoring. What is speed mentoring? Many to one. Uh, in this condition, uh, there will be a lot of mentors available. There will be a group of students. They will be given a particular allotted time. So they have to come prepared with a set of questions. And there will be a group of experts. Time, they should immediately talk and finish the Okay, now this is called speed mentoring. Okay, can we have the next slide? The next slide, please. Yes. Stages of mentoring. What are the different stages? Now, when there are people who mentor for a long period suppose i am mentoring somebody for four or five months there will be stages in which the mentoring happens the mentoring usually happens in four stages the first stage is initiation where we try to get to know the mentee we try to get details about that person what problems they may face all these things we gather data now, that is the initiation stage. Next stage is the cultivation stage. That person, we try to understand what your problems are, where the weak areas are, and we try to help them out. That is cultivation period. Separation stage is when uh, you the mentee goes away to another semester or to another course like that in that stage the mentee tries to adopt all the principles which we have given them so they come back to us with feedback saying that this has helped me this has not helped me so you try to discuss it out with them that is the separation stage and finally redefinition stage redefinition is once they have 
finished that year and they have gone to the next year and you won't be teaching them at that time but still they keep coming to us see in the first year usually we take mentor mentees but even in fourth year i see some students coming back asking for help asking for feedback because that's the kind of rapport we develop with them isn't it so that is the redefinition stage and some people they keep in contact even after they finish their studies even after they go abroad or even after they take up a career okay so mentor there is actually i feel there is actually no mentoring can continue throughout life who have kept in touch with us even after they have finished their studies and they have gone and settled in some other country also isn't it so that is redefinition stage so these are the stages of mentoring can we have the next slide yes etiquette of mentoring now when we are mentoring as i told you it's a very personal process also it's a professional process as well as personal process so there are a few guidelines to be followed because we need to be have ethical standards in mentoring because the person the mentee is sharing a lot of information with us at more personal healthy boundaries sometimes we have to deal with personal problems of the students sometimes we have ma'am participants uh, the resource person will be joining us shortly hello yes ma'am you are audible now ma'am okay i'm sorry something happened with wifi it suddenly got disconnected okay uh, we'll continue with the presentation i'll start with etiquette of mentoring again okay so what is the etiquette of mentoring i told you mentoring is a very personal process and because of this there is a lot of personal information that is collected by the mentors okay and though we help them professionally sometimes personal life of the mentees play a very vital role in their academic performances sometimes the family background or the family situations or conditions also play an important role on the performance of the students so because of this it becomes imperative for the mentors to gather personal information but as mentors we have to be ethical and there are a few tips that can be followed regarding this personal aspect of the mentees 
and because we are collecting lot of personal information we need to have a very healthy boundaries that means we should collect information only as much as the situation demands that's it not more than that and we have to have very clear boundaries how much they are sharing how much we are sharing sometimes as mentors we have to share our personal experience also to make them understand what is happening okay so in that conditions also we need to have healthy boundaries with our students next we should actively listen actively listen means we should listen not to comment but to understand what the person is trying to say what are his intentions what are his fears what are his ambitions all these things we have to listen to very carefully and that is active listening and next is sympathy and empathy sometimes students may have personal problems isn't it it can be some illness it can be some uh, very tricky situations at home or with their own personal life we should not comment we should not joke or we should not make fun of all that no we should listen with sympathy and empathy we should try to understand put ourselves in their situation they are after all teenagers isn't it and teenage is such a uh, hormonal stage where people are eternally confused i think so that is why we have to be more patient with them we have to have sympathy and empathy and we should respect a person for the struggle they are going through and we should always respect them for the choices that they have made they may have made a wrong choice you can point it out very politely instead of just uh, uh, i mean uh, telling it in a very uh, sarcastic way okay yeah and give a lot of positive encouragement always try to uh, see the positive side and try to uh, build that confidence in them by giving them constant encouragement even if they have failed try to boost them and say yeah you can do it next time please do it don't give up okay so that is the kind of positivity that we need to have and we need to instill the same in our students and next is create a safe environment don't be so judgmental see after all they are teenagers sometimes they make mistakes isn't it so give them a safe environment where they can express their thought fearlessly then they will confide and tell you what the real problem is otherwise they will simply cover up and tell a lot of lies so if you make it safe for them they will be truthful with us so that is very very important for a mentor to give a safe environment a safe platform for them to express and next always have a sensitivity towards cultural and gender issues what is right in some culture may not be right in another culture what is right for one gender may not be right in another gender so we have to understand these kind of situations we have to be very sensitive about these things as adults it is our responsibility they are adolescents they they don't have that kind of knowledge or maturity so we are the matured ones here so the mentor should be very sensitive to the cultural and gender issues that are involved in mentoring can we have the next slide yeah what are the benefits of having a mentor mentoring actually helps in improving learning i have seen this personally in many students when they have a good mentor their performances increase well i am not saying there will be a phenomenal change but at least people who are slagging behind people who don't have much of a drive those people we can push they have talent but some of some people they need someone to push them such people can improve their performance if they have a good mentor okay and next is gaining practical insights and guidance we can answer so many questions for them which will help them clear their vision and give them a good goals okay and next we can increase their confidence 
usually if we encourage them positively that itself boosts their confidence a lot and improve interpersonal and communication skills now good communication skills and good interpersonal skills are very very essential for any mentor if we are very good communicators they will feel safe with us they will share their all goals happiness disappointments everything they will share with us empowerment from the mentee to progress effectively this i have discussed at the very beginning the primary duty of the mentor is to empower the student to give them the power to go forward and wider understanding of different perspectives when we mentor 20 people we get 20 different perspectives isn't it so that will also help us widen our own understanding the teacher gets a wider understanding by interacting with so many students a trusted person to discuss more confidential challenges and goals see some students they will open up more to a mentor than their own family members it happens also why because we are objective in their family they have uh, fear they may have uh, they may feel that they will be judged so when you create a safe environment they will put more confidence in us and they will reveal more to us okay so that will help them figure out uh, uh, their goals and challenges so in that way we as mentors can help next slide please potential problems there can be some problems regarding mentoring just like anything anything we do we may develop some challenges for mentoring also there are a few challenges the first one is if you mentor too much if you micromanage if you tell them each and everything they will become too dependent on you that is never good always try to guide them in such a way that they will make their own decisions instead of making decisions for them we should make them learn how to do their own decisions that is the goal of a mentor we should not make them dependent on us they should rely on us they should not depend on us okay now don't micromanage don't tell them each and everything I see some people, they give the problem, they give the solution, they give everything. That is not correct. Make them discuss the problem. Make them discuss different options of solutions and make them choose the right option. Just guide them through it. That's it. Don't make decisions for them because that won't help them. Okay. Finally, when they go for jobs they have to make their own decisions isn't it so it is better we mold them in such a way that they get the capacity to make their own decisions and next this is also very important no personal favors when we are a mentor for a 20 students those 20 students definitely will become very close to us but that should not come in the way of our classroom performance or our assessment of students that should never cloud our judgment because when we assess papers written by students you should forget who those papers belong to it is absolutely immaterial so don't let personal favors cloud your judgment as a mentor now next jealousies this is a follow up point to personal favors now if we start giving personal favors to some students just because they are mentors it creates a lot of jealousy in the environment which will ultimately spoil the class so please as mentors we have to avoid these things we have to be careful not to do these things as mentors next slide please role of mentoring in education as i told at the beginning itself now mentoring is adopted by each and every educational institution so what is the role of mentoring in the field of education 
let us see these things in education the role of a mentor is to instruct inspire support and role model the mentor should be able to instruct the people inspire them to do better things and to support them and to become a role model for them because mostly i have observed that people always do what we do they don't do what we say they observe us very carefully the students always observe the students always observe the teachers very carefully and they always try to follow and emulate us so that is why it is very important for us as teachers to set a good example to become a role model to our students and next always from day one try to explore give them career options tell them about different courses tell them how they can get better jobs tell them which areas they have to work on for a better job so those things if you keep discussing in the class along with your subject it will help them okay and next is goal setting whenever the mentee comes you try to uh, ask them about their goals ask them what steps are they are taking to reach that goal okay and next always network yeah you can help them with your own contacts see suppose they have some problem with coaching isn't it you can suggest one of your friends who is a coach so like that your networking helps your mentees also and next uh, give feedback always give feedback very objectively okay don't uh, involve personal feelings in any of these things okay give the feedback objectively be very professional though you learn all your personal things be very professional about it don't get too involved because that will lead to problems next build confidence in the person make them understand that they can do this they can reach their goals that they have made good decisions so always give them positive information and uh, have good relationship with them and nurture them guide them be like a parent to them okay and next develop resilience character and personality if a mentor is very very involved very very focused on the mentees def definitely they will become a people with good personality and character that is also our responsibility isn't it that is where the personal aspect comes you try to instill good values in them because they will help them later when they become professionals so develop Uh, their ethical sense also along with academic sense it is very important for the teachers to develop ethical sense also in the students that's my personal feeling and i'm i'm sure most of you or at least some of you will agree with me and next next slide please qualities of mentors what are the qualities that are required for mentors the first one is interpersonal skills i told you interpersonal and communication both are important for a mentor we need to communicate with them openly knowledge of teaching methods it is very important for us as teachers to get trained as teachers see some of us uh, join after taking training some people may not have the chance but still after at least joining the teaching community it i think it is our duty to undergo the training so that we can learn the best methods to teach isn't it training really helps us uh because uh, i have experienced it personally so that's why i'm able to say this training really helps us we may have ability uh, and talent for teaching but still training helps it it gives you more uh, tips it gives you more practical methods to follow to become a good teacher okay and you 
mentoring helps you to be very responsible and mentoring makes the student also responsible and accountable because when somebody is always asking how you are doing are you improving definitely they will feel more responsible they will feel more accountable okay and next good listening skills as i told active listening is very important without judgment without criticism listen listen to the real problem Re listen to what is not being said people always say things but there is something else behind those words you should be able to listen to that silence also that is that is what makes us a good mentor that we are able to capture something which is not spoken and that we can learn through body language okay i will discuss that in the coming slides next try to connect with the student always develop a personal rapport we may have 20 students but still we can have personal rapport with each of them so it is up to us as mentors can we have the next slide yeah what are the tips for mentors yeah here i am talking about body language observe the body language of the person see sometimes some people they are very shy so they say one thing but they mean something else okay now in this in such conditions how can we learn what is really happening in the mind of the student through body language so try to observe the body language of the student when he or she speaks then you will know how much truth they are telling how much they are hiding okay that will help you go one step deeper and that will make them trust you now when you are able to know what they are not telling they will develop respect for you they will develop a good bond with you and they will have more confidence in you to tell what their real problem is because teenagers are very shy so we need to cross that barrier to make a connect with the student maintain eye contact always maintain eye contact with the student because that makes them feel uh, treasured that makes them feel noticed now when when they feel that they are being noticed their behavior will be better and next be very mindful means be very sensitive to their feelings if they are not well or if they have some problem be sensitive towards it of course some people try to cheat but that we can observe through body language so in genuine cases please be sensitive to their feelings be non judgmental don't judge people it is never a good thing because it will spoil the confidence it will make them lose respect for you and it will create lot of behavioral problems with the students so we need to be not judgmental whatever our personal feelings and opinions are we should not impose them on the students and please don't preach now adolescence and preaching never gel i'm sure all of you will agree with this as parents as teachers also we need we should never preach to the adolescents try to package it in such a way that it becomes palatable to them so instead of uh, uh, saying it like a moral aphorism give it like a suggestion give it with respect give it with sensitivity definitely they will agree okay so it depends on how well we package the thing and next focus put your entire focus on the person while they are speaking that will make them feel very very uh, confident and that will make them trust you because they they see that yeah she is paying lot of attention so let me be very forthcoming with that person okay so put your focus on that person have a clear agenda before uh, mentor meeting itself usually we take out a book and write down the points which we are supposed to discuss in that particular session that helps actually that keeps us grounded otherwise that half an hour or one hour will be wasted 
talking about unnecessary things so instead of that if we write point wise what we are supposed to speak or discuss with them that will give us focus that will give us an agenda and they also will be focused on the problems and next confidentiality whatever personal information or academic non academic whichever information we get from our mentees is something very very confidential just like a lawyer and client confidentiality or or a patient and a psychiatrist confidentiality mentor mentee can confidentiality is also equally important because the problems discussed are very very personal it is our duty to protect their privacy we should not go around discussing their life with others that will uh, create lot of problems and uh, that is setting a very bad example so as mentors we should be careful of these things next slide please mentor action plan see i told you before uh, each session we have to write down the agenda so what are the common things i am not saying these are the only things so what are the common things that we have to write in a mentor action plan see first one is what are the short term goals what are the long term goals short term goal is the that semester what we are going to do that semester and long term goal is finally at the end of the course what they are going to do okay so these things we have to very uh, clear cut we have to give them information on these things which areas need help which subjects are you weak in uh, what kind of help do you need for these subjects these are the things we have to concentrate on and next learning difficulties some people they may have talent but they don't know how to study they lack study skills they have uh, knowledge they have uh, hard working everything they have sometimes they don't know how to study they don't know how to organize time they don't know how, how on which aspects they have to concentrate for exam isn't it for such students we can impart study skills how to make notes how to uh um, write uh, or solve the projects how to get uh, marks which parts they should study to get good marks so such things such information we can give them which will help them solve their learning difficulties and next problem solving whatever problems they have we can help as much as we can this sometimes we can't that is also there i should agree that because sometimes they have some family situations and family situations we cannot help isn't it it depends on the family so in such conditions the best we can do is to make them have less impact on their performance that's it only that much we can do so we have to humbly agree that there are some things a mentor can do there are some things a mentor cannot do so we have to take both in our right next yeah what are the common mentoring practices in education usually the process of mentoring is uh, i think more or less common in all educational institutions in india i have um, checked a few websites a uh, few uh, past few days and i have seen that um, almost all the institutions follow roughly the same pattern i don't say the exact same pattern but roughly uh, everybody follows the same pattern that is uh, each mentor is given 20 to 25 students mostly and uh, most of the cases they have uh, a collection of data regarding the students in our college we have one book for each student they will be given all uh, they have the all the information pertaining to the student all personal information as well as their contact details blood group everything everything comes into one book and in some cases in some colleges i have seen that they have a, a single big book in which each page is allotted for one student it varies from college to college but data collection is common to all colleges okay next is reporting of critical issues whenever some issue rises regarding their behavior regarding their classroom performance or regarding anything else it should be 
clearly noted in the book or in that particular page which is allotted to the student because written documentation is very very important for mentoring because we need to have an accountability isn't it the mentor as well as the mentee okay and next is have periodical meetings in some colleges i have observed that they meet twice in a month in some colleges they have once in a week in our college we have once in a week in some colleges i have observed they have twice a month so depending on whatever schedule the management of the college gives but there should be periodical meetings periodical checking in with the student and next documentation leads to accountability that is why documentation is done and now next is teacher student parent management now a mentor is a bridge i think he acts as a bridge between all these four components teacher student parent management when something happens with the student the mentor should inform the teacher if the student has a problem in a particular subject he should inform the teacher if the management or the teacher has something to say to the student they should inform the student if some exams or some procedures have to be followed by the parents that information should be passed on to the parents and if regarding fees or any other uh, things pertaining to management they should inform the management so the mentor has a close contact with all these four components and continuously they interact with these four components okay and next a mentor acts as a monitor as a guide he is a monitor observing the progress of the student he is a guide in guiding them towards solutions to the problems and next a mentor is supposed to give career advice counseling i told you already from day one start with career counseling that is very important to keep them focused on the goal because the reason they have joined the college is to reach that goal isn't it so that is why career advice should be given they should counsel the students periodically try to find problems and solutions both and sensitivity towards culture and gender i have already explained this so i am not going again into this can we have the next slide yeah now this is a good i found this good quotation by none other than steven spielberg one of the greatest directors the delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image but giving them opportunity to create themselves i have already discussed this aspect but i find that this should be the conclusion to our presentation because this is what mentoring is mentoring is making the person develop into what they are it is making them understand their true potential and live up to it that is what mentoring is it is not making the students depend on us it is making the student depend on themselves and become a guidance to others so that should be the ultimate goal of a mentor i think so any queries i'll be happy to answer yes please